Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about the discovery of the fastest spinning star in our galaxy. Let's talk about this very recent discovery and welcome to What The Math. So imagine for a second you were standing on the surface of our planet, specifically on the equator, where you would be moving at the fastest possible speed because of the rotation speed being the highest at the equator. Here, because of the rotation of our planet, you would be moving at a speed of about 460 meters per second, or about 1600 kilometers per hour, or 1000 miles per hour. So pretty fast, but not really as fast as some of the other objects in the solar system and also in the galaxy. Now, for example, if you were to stand on the surface of the Sun, in the same equatorial region, you would now be moving about 5 times as fast, approximately 2000 meters per second, or about 5000 miles per hour. So this is quite fast, but really not as fast as some of the other planets. The fastest spinning object in our solar system is Jupiter. And here, at the equator, you would be moving about 6 times as fast, or about 12.6 kilometers per second. Now this is basically as fast as it gets in the solar system, and because of this really high velocity, Jupiter possesses quite a lot of various stormy activities on the surface, most of which do occur at the equator, and this is essentially where you can find the great red spot of Jupiter as well. But even though the speed of rotation here is approximately 28 times as high as planet Earth, this is still not as high as some of the other stars out there. Now obviously we're not going to be talking about some of the more extreme examples like neutron stars which can actually spin really fast, sometimes even pushing the boundaries and spinning at roughly around 30% of the speed of light, we really are talking about regular stars, stars like our sun. And one of the best well known examples of fast spinning stars is actually our neighbor Akernar. This is not really that far, it's only about 139 light years away from us in the constellation Eridanus. And this star is really bright, but it's also unusually shaped as you can see. With the average mass about 7 times the mass of the Sun, um, it actually manages to spin once every 2 days. And the actual velocity here, uh, if you were to stand on the equator again, would be approximately 250 km per second, or roughly around 500 times the speed on the surface of our planet Earth. Now this has been actually a record holder for a very long time, but in the last few years we started discovering more of these unusual objects, and we found quite a lot of them um, having really similar properties as well. So for example, last year I talked about the fastest spinning star known as VFTS 102, but this is not located in the Milky Way, it's actually in a nearby galaxy of large Magellanic Cloud in one of the more active regions of star formation near us, known as the Tarantula Nebula. Here there are a lot of really large massive stars, and some of them have really extreme records. And one of the records here is of course the fastest spinning star. But now we've discovered a very similar star, although this time with a much more complex name. And just like those other stars in the Large Magellanic Cloud, it seems to possess very similar properties. It's moving really fast across the night skies, it's spinning really fast, it seems to possess uh, relatively similar characteristics in terms of the actual mass size and essentially all of the other properties, but most importantly, it's very likely not spherical. It's more likely a kind of a squished face with a really large disk around um, itself as well. Now this is really interesting because all of this is formed as a result of fast rotation. Mostly because as the star starts spinning faster and faster, the gravity at the equator starts decreasing due to the centrifugal forces. And we can even detect these gravitational changes by looking at differences between the polar region and the equatorial region. And because the gravity here decreases, the star starts forming this kind of a disk shape that eventually even starts throwing out some of the material from the equator, forming another flatter disk around it. More or less resembling something like this, but on, on a much larger scale. And all of this is a result of the star here spinning about 540 km per second, or essentially um, around 1200 times faster than on the surface of planet Earth. All of this creates incredible centrifugal forces and a lot of other unusual uh, effects that we're still trying to learn about, mostly because these stars are still relatively rare. Now because of all of this material that's being thrown out at the equator, these stars actually produce a very different spectrum as well that we can easily detect. But unfortunately, as of a few months ago, we've only detected 13 such stars in our galaxy, now technically 14 with this new addition. So in other words, these stars seem to be pretty rare, and it's most likely to do with the way that they're generated, and the way that they actually form to have this uh, high velocity. Today we believe that the way all of these stars have formed is by actually having relatively large massive partners. 
And essentially, as these two stars orbit around one another relatively close, because of their mass and because of their generally large size, they kind of start breaking each other apart with various tidal forces, and a lot of the material here begins to slowly transfer from one star to another, and as this happens, one of the stars starts spinning up um, its actual rotation. All of this is actually due to the transfer of rotational momentum, but um, essentially with time, as the mass transfers more and more, the star starts spinning more and more. But eventually its partner becomes destabilized by all of this and initiates a supernova, which then ends up creating such a huge push on the star that it starts moving across the galaxy really fast. Which is why pretty much all of these stars we've discovered so far were so-called runaway stars. They were moving a lot faster than they should across the galaxy. But it seems like these conditions are extremely rare because we haven't really found that many stars like this. And it also seems like these stars don't really last very long because we've only discovered a small handful of these stars and they all will probably go supernova as well in approximately a few million years or so. But in general, even though these stars are rare, they're still really interesting, mostly because they do seem to produce various effects here at the equator including much stronger solar winds or stellar winds that would be um, unfortunately kind of really dangerous for any planet in the way here. So in other words, if this star had any planets here orbiting at the equator and if they survived the initial supernova, they would now be irradiated with huge amounts of solar wind and very likely be stripped of any atmosphere and possibly even possess really unusual surface features that would only be possible when there's so much solar wind striking the surface. Although it is a lot more likely that a lot of these planets would probably not even survive the initial supernova, mostly because of the amount of energy generated by a relatively large massive star exploding so close. And there are very likely a lot more effects generated here by all of this really fast velocity. These stars probably have a lot of various stellar storms, they also have a lot more activity at the equator, but most importantly is that, well, at some point they will also go supernova, very likely. And once they go supernova, it's probable that they're actually going to create an extremely fast spinning remnant, most likely a neutron star. And not just any neutron star, but a neutron star spinning at close to the limit of fastest speed possible. Very close to the speed of light, probably. And because we've actually discovered really fast spinning neutron stars moving really fast across the galaxy, it becomes very likely that this is exactly how they were created as well. By these really fast moving stars that were uh, created by a partner that exploded close to them. Although right now, this is not something we can definitely say with certainty. But anyway, it's definitely an interesting discovery of a new record holder for this fastest spinning star in the galaxy, with an average velocity of over 540 kilometers per second, creating this unusual shape that you see right here. And because a very similar star exists in our vicinity, in our neighborhood, it's actually kind of interesting for us to learn more about what happens to these stars eventually, and also if they do possess any unusual planets around them because this is something we would really like to investigate in a little bit more detail. But until we learn more, that's really it. Thank you for watching, check out the paper in the description below, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and consider supporting this channel on Patreon, because it does help me quite a lot. Or alternatively, you can also support this channel by buying the beautiful, wonderful person t-shirt that I'm wearing right now as well. Anyway, on that note, I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.